<laughs> Welcome to Click to Learn More, the show that sounds like clickbait, but is actually two dorks. I'm Dorm. I'm Liddy. Hey there, Lidzo. Hey, Dorm. That's how I actually started my notes, but hey, hey there, Lidzo. <laughs> hey, uh, Dorm. Today, in betwixt two murder field... Pe- f- field? Oh, that's a good start. <laughs> Listen, we've not been able to talk all night. No, we have... We're completely sober, but have not been able to talk. <laughs> we sat down to, like, we ate and watched some stuff, and yeah. b- our brains is broke. I, I don't know. I couldn't think of Andy Serkis's name for about an hour. I don't know what happened. Our brains is broke. Anyway. <laughs> uh, in betwixt two murder-filled episodes, mm-hmm. I want to talk about the history of something that almost everyone on the planet Earth is probably familiar with. Okay. An item so commonplace that the history of the item may now seem an afterthought. <gasps> but seeing as how we're exposed to it in some way in almost a daily basis, I wanted to learn more about it. Also, uh, they're on both of our bodies right <gasps> um, now. Um, uh, uh... T-shirts. You can't think of a joke. Uh, right now. You, I'm sorry. You were I was going to say socks, but I couldn't remember if you were wearing any. I always wear oh. socks. Well, I don't like showing my feet. I, was, <laughs> I didn't I, know that. I have ugly, you, what, I've told you this before. But you've been barefooted before. Yeah, I know because I'm comfortable around you now. But <laughs> like for a while, I never wore. I never was barefoot because I think I have ugly feet. <laughs> I have mom, like hobbit feet. My mom says I have Fred Flintstone feet. If that makes you feel any better, oh. I'm sure your mom at least compliments yours. Thanks. She's literally never said anything about my well, feet. Well, my mom said I got the worst of her feet and my dad's feet, and I have ugly feet. I got my dad's feet. Yeah. So thanks for that, mom. Uh, I anyway, was, I was t-shirts. putting away. I was putting away laundry the other day. Speaking of which, I feel like every one of my stories recently has something to do with laundry. Really? Yeah, I don't know why. I was doing a lot of laundry, I guess. And I have far too many tees, so I thought, hey, why are these the most common item of clothing I own, and where did they come from? Let's find out, shall we? Yeah, let's find out. My sources today include, but aren't limited to, the New York Times, okay. Real Thread, which is a fashion history blog, uh, Vogue, Google, Google Arts and Culture, and of course, Wikipedia. Of course. Uh, to understand where t-shirts come from, we have to teleport back in the time in time to the dorm era. <gasps> That's right, folks. We're back in the 19th century once again. 1800s abound. Uh, In that time period, garment makers were experimenting with providing warmer clothes uh, at a less of a cost. Mm -hmm. Um, Or just cheaper clothes in general. Is this the time of bloomers? Uh, I guess, kind of, yeah. Sort of. Uh, To do that, they researched materials and fabrics that would allow the garment to stretch over the head and snap back into shape, almost like a sock for your bod. Oh, a bod sock. Yeah. Uh, out of this research <laughs> came the long john undergarment. Yeah. Uh, which was incredibly popular, but also considered scandalous. I didn't know this. What? Is uh, it because they had the little the little window on the butt? The little butt flaps? Yeah, the, l- the little flaps on the butt. But they, were, they were worn, like, under your... Like, they were an undergarment. They were one united oh, undergarment. Oh, I wonder if that's why they were scandalous, because they were... It is why they were oh, scandalous. Oh, okay. Um, so scandalous, in fact, that in the 1890s, Havana, Cuba officials banned the public <gasps> display of any long john what? Considering it a quote underwear top, but but it's covering your whole body. That's so strange. To yeah, me. a lot of times like they would wear or people at the time would wear like long john if they were out working in a field or something. They would wear long johns and then just pants because yeah. it was a lighter fabric. Yeah, uh, but that was banned. So that meant that people who worked in the fields in Cuba had to wear full on buttoned up shirts and pants to work in. No, it must have been miserable. Well, like, long johns are supposed to keep you warm anyway, right? So at this time, were they, like, a different fabric? Well, I think there were different types of long johns. I think Ah. the long johns that have kind of survived have been the warmer ones, yeah. So these were the ones that just had the nips cut out. Yes. So this is why they were so... Yeah, they were were the breezy type with no nips, no pits. They were so provocative. That was the uh, tagline. (laughs) No nips, no pits. (laughs) It's just sleeves. Yeah. (laughs) The t-shirt evolved from these types of undergarments. First, the one-piece union suit underwear was cut into separate top and bottom garments. Mm -hmm. So union suit is just another way to call a long john, really. Yeah. Um, Because people in the Civil War, the union wore them. It's yeah, Um, and it's all one piece. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But then those were cut in half with the top long enough to tuck under the waistband of the bottoms. Okay. With and without buttons, they were adopted by miners and stevedores. Do you know what a stevedore is? Oh, I used to. But it's basically it... like a longshoreman, like a dock worker. Oh, okay. Um, during the late 19th century as a convenient uh, covering for hot environments. Hmm. So basically just like wearing a long sleeve t-shirt today or a t-shirt today. That's what they were doing. Uh, this next bit is from the New York Times who have an amazing piece of history on the tee. It's really long, but I stole this, this little bit. <laughs> um, in 1904, the Cooper Underwear Company ran a magazine ad announcing a new product for bachelors. Oh, no. In the before photo, a man averts his eyes from the camera as if embarrassed. He's lost all the buttons on his undershirt and has safety pinned its flaps together. <laughs> so he's just almost shirtless, but he's saving his himself with a few safety undershirt pins. undershirt had buttons on it? Yes. Yeah. So, so all the clothes... wearing two different button shirts. Oh, gosh. Awful. 
Uh, in the after photo, a Viral gentleman sports a handlebar mustache, smokes a cigar, and wears a, quote, bachelor undershirt, end quote. That guy bangs. Yes. Stretchy enough to be pulled over the head. Quote, no safety pins, no buttons, no needle, no thread, ran the slogan. Aimed at men with no wives and no sewing skills. <laughs> God. That's why they called it the bachelor shirt. Ah. Uh, someone in the U.S. Navy must have seen the logic in this because the following year, the quartermaster's office specified that sailors should wear undershirts with no buttons under their uniforms. Soon, thousands of men became acquainted with the comfort of the cotton pullover. Imagine how much nicer that was, though. Oh, yeah. Just having a button one shirt. Like, it, it, okay, so did they not have an undershirt without but Like, they didn't have, like, a tank top or anything. So no. were there... They're just chest is just getting rubbed raw with buttons all day long. Probably, like yeah. the, the threads on the back of the buttons all day long. Yeah. T shirts were a godsend then. Oh yeah, I'm sure they were great. Ugh. Or I guess if you weren't undershirt, it would have been like a long john type thing. Yeah. But that was a whole undergarment and that could have gotten hot or full whatever. Thing. Yeah. Oh imagine trying to pee. Like going to Oh pee. god. Having you to take, take off, off your pants five layer, and then yeah. take off your sleeves and, and then take you off got, yeah, or you take got, off the flap, I guess. You gotta take off your your I don't know, you gotta take off your shirts. You can take Yeah, that seems real complicated. But gradually, the crew neck caught on. In 1920, the garment was reborn under another name, thanks partly to... Who do you think named the t-shirt the t-shirt? The t-shirt? Is this someone I would know? Yes. Um, In 1920. 1920. Uh, They're given have, credit because it was the first written account of it. Can I have a hint? Sure. Author. Oh. George Orwell. <laughs> F. Scott Fitzgerald. Oh. I, well, he never wore a t-shirt a day in his life. Always wore suits. <laughs> They wore a t-shirt underneath, probably. No. According to the Oxford... <laughs> no. I knew F. Scott well. Uh, you think he was called F. Scott, by the way? Yeah. Or people I, call him Scott? I think they would run up and go, great, Scott. Ah. Yeah. Way before Back to the Future? Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, they, well when they went Back to the Future, they started that. Oh, got it. Yeah. So those were the time travelers yeah. who made Back to the Future? Yeah. Uh-huh. Wouldn't that be weird if you were a time traveler and your only goal was to make a movie about the time travel you did? Oh, my God. It's very cyclical. I have to go. You've just found me out. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> Liddy wrote Looper in 2012. <laughs> no, it's a terrible film. <laughs> Is it 2012? Somewhere around I don't time. know. Anyway, who cares? <laughs> Nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> according to the Oxford English Dictionary, the author was the first to use the word t-shirt in print. It appears in the novel This Side of Paradise in a list of accountants that a character carries with him to boarding school. Fitzgerald seems to have assumed that the idea of a t-shirt, so named pro- presumably because of the shirt's shape, mm-hmm. uh, would be familiar to readers and that they would associate it with the, quote, white flanneled barehanded youths, end quote, of New England prep oh, schools. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So it was a very hoity-toity thing, of course, because of F. Scott Fitzgerald. Right. They soon became popular as a bottom layer of clothing for workers in various industries, including agriculture. The t-shirt was easily fitted, easily cleaned, and inexpensive, and for those reasons became the shirt of choice for young boys. Well, heck yeah. Boys' shirts were made in various colors and patterns. Uh, by the Great Depression... I was just going to say, you can't keep a button-up shirt on a little boy. No. Like, yeah, he'll just rip like, it off. Yeah, like that, that T-shirt. You'd probably keep a T-shirt gonna, on a boy. Yeah, you're going to run out of buttons. He's going to pop those buttons <laughs> off so fast. <laughs> he got a little Benjamin... When did you become a 60-year-old woman? <laughs> he's got a little... He's going to run out of buttons. He's got a little button boy right there. He's collecting buttons. I, the joke is you de-aged 20 years. Oh, By yeah. the Great Depression, the t-shirt it's was kind. often... <laughs> it's kind of you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep the joke running. By the Great Depression, the t-shirt was often the default garment to be worn when doing farm or ranch chores, as well as other times when modesty called for a torso covering, but conditions called for lightweight fabrics. <laughs> I just... That, that, that blows my mind, that, like, modesty... Like, you're outside suffering heat stroke, and you're like, no, gotta be modest! <laughs> What's well, like Gotta the, be modest! It's like the pictures of, like, old-timey people at the beach in their swimsuits. Mm-hmm. And they always have, like, a shirt on. And, yeah. and swim, like, you yeah. know, like old handlebar 30s people. Yeah. Um, and then the women would get beat up for showing their ankles. Well. You know. Good old, the you good old. make it violent. The good old days. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. Have You've a, been working on a skin tag this is the no, whole entire no, time no, or something. No, I have a, I had a, uh, I got it now. Oh, good. <laughs> I just had to bite it off. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't a skin tag, listeners. What was it? It was like a little, like, um, air bubble trapped under my skin. Oh, Do you ever weird. get those? No. <laughs> Don't say that I'm a freak. I think you are. Sometimes I get a little air bubble and I'm just going to pop Sorry, I was going to ignore it, but you were just biting your finger for like 20 minutes. Well, I, no, I <laughs> slid, I sliced it open with my nails first. Ew. And then I chomped at it for Gross. a minute. And now it's fine and it just hurts slightly worse than it did before. I don't know why I choose to do this with you. <laughs> <laughs> because I pay you monthly to be my friend. Oh, God. Who have you been paying? I haven't been getting those. 
Oh, come on. Are you kidding me? Not again. <laughs> you must have been playing. You must have been paying Storm Dreams, my arch nemesis. <laughs> I got to make some calls. The following World <laughs> War II. Storm Dreams. That is... <laughs> Thank you. That just got me. Okay. Following World War II, uh, it was worn, the t-shirt, was worn by, what's the topic at hand, not <laughs> Liddy's hand. Yeah. Uh, not the topic of hand. <laughs> Following World War II, the t-shirt was worn by Navy men as undergarments and slowly became to see uh, veterans wearing their uniform trousers with their t-shirts as casual clothing. Ooh, Natural evolution, right? right? They just so, took off their 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 shirts. So, so, no, so, so this, one, this, this one was okay to show, though. So mm. the they didn't want to show yeah. the long johns, but they're cool showing the t-shirts. Okay. Yes. Uh, the shirts became even more popular in the ninth popular, like the tree, uh, in the 1950s after uh, Marlon Brando, mm. Doctor Javago himself, wore one in a or not is it Doctor Doctor Moreau? Sorry, Dr. wrong, Moreau. yeah, we, wrong, yeah, we wrong movie just... doctor, uh, wore one in a streetcar named Desire. Okay, so this was during the time when they would like roll up their cigarette in the sleeve yeah, and stuff like come to that, yeah. yeah and so they look like bad boys with yes. the, just the stark white t-shirt and the Stay jeans Stay golden pony boy yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah the outsiders yeah um finally achieving the status as fashionable standalone outerwear garments so that really it's funny but like a lot you you hear about you hear this about a lot of like cultural touchstones at the time where it's like someone doing something in a movie mm-hmm. made it legitimate yeah like the first time they showed a man and a woman sleeping together on television, it was like scandalous, but also legitimizing. And like, yeah. first time a woman smoked in a film and things right. like that. Like, yeah. you hear about that a lot. So it, nothing different with a t-shirt. Mm-hmm. Um, it becomes a, because it's like it becomes a trend then too, right? Like it becomes yeah, the exactly. cool thing to right. do. Yeah, like yeah. Marlon Brando, the biggest guy in the world, yeah. did it. So why not? Yeah. Often boys while wore them while doing chores and playing outside. Eventually, opening up the idea of wearing them as general purpose casual clothing. So they were both seen as legitimate clothing and general purpose you can hmm. wear them whenever uh now printed t-shirts yeah were uh in limited use in 1942 when an air corps gunnery school t-shirt appeared on the cover of life magazine liddy just tried to show off her t-shirt well, to I, no camera I, well i'm wearing my click to learn more shirt and i just you remembered are indeed. when you said you said printed shirt and i was like oh yeah i've got mine on today yeah i'm wearing a t-shirt too i'm wearing my my <laughs> james bond shirt <laughs> I'm not trying to one up you. <laughs> hey, I'm wearing a t-shirt hey, too. I'm wearing a shirt too. Let's come on. I'm clothed come for on. once. Um, <laughs> yeah, now that there's no now there's no camera, little do you know that we we just we sit here in our undergarments and in our long johns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the we time we put on more clothes. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're just here in like ten jackets <laughs> for no reason. For, we're the, just miserable. The, we're we just do it as an in joke to each other. Comforters, yeah. like, just like, I mean, to be fair, you're always wearing a jacket of some I, sort. Yeah, so I'm I always could, wearing a hoodie. That's I could true. see you wearing like eight more. And there was one time, no joke. Sorry, as an aside, there was a one time when you came to my house and uh-huh. literally had four jackets. Yeah, on. I literally. That's ha- not a joke. I had. There I, were four jackets I had on a this person. Coat, a winter coat, mm-hmm. and then a hooded lightweight jacket underneath yes and then i had um a sweatshirt on under that yeah and then my shirt had a hood yes so i had four hoods <laughs> at one point it was insane <laughs> i couldn't turn you my crazy head crazy person yeah you went <laughs> locked in you looked like a little kid when you sent him out to go skiing or something or like to go uh, sledding yeah and yeah. they just they can only move like, arms out to like the barbie side. yeah the t-posing everything's, the yeah, 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 everything's yeah. locked in place yeah yeah that's what Livy looked like as a grown-ass woman uh <laughs> <laughs> By the time the 1950s rolled around, a number of companies in Miami, Florida, began experimenting with garment decoration. Did not know Miami was the birthplace yeah, of printed okay. shirts. All right. Uh, one method that would later turn into a multi-billion-dollar industry was that of screen printing. Yeah, we'll get into that a little bit later. Perfect. These companies in Miami started to screen print T-shirts with various resort names and illustrated characters. One of the first companies to dabble in this field was known at the time as Tropics Togs. Okay. I don't know what Togs is. Yeah. Uh, under the founder Sam Cantor. Sounds these, like a fake name. these all sound fake. Yeah. Like the, all of this sounds made up. Uh, Tropics Togs held the original license for screen printed Walt Disney characters such as Mickey Mouse and Davy Crockett. Excuse me. Davy Crockett's a Disney character, apparently. What? Not a. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Uh, it wouldn't be until 1960 that screen printed T-shirts would be seen as an accepted means for self-expression, commercial advertisements, political views, and souvenir messaging. Mm. Since the 1960s, T-sheets. T- well, it's bound to happen at some point. T-shirts have flourished <laughs> as a form of personal expression. Screen printed t-shirts have been a standard form of marketing for major American consumer projects such as Coca-Cola and Mickey Mouse again mm-hmm. since the 70s. Oh, yeah. It's also been commonly used to commemorate an event or to make a political or personal statement. Since the 1990s, it has become a common practice for companies of all sizes to produce t-shirts with their corporate logos or messages as part of their overall advertising campaigns. Since the late 1980s and especially the 1990s, t-shirts with prominent designer name logos have become popular, especially with teenagers and young adults. 
Those garments allow consumers to flaunt their taste for designer brands in an inexpensive way, in addition to being decorative. Examples of designer t-shirts uh, include Calvin Klein, FUBU, which stands for 4S by us. Is Ralph, that what this stands for? Yep. I think you've told me that before, yeah. actually. Uh, I think you've told me that. Ralph Lauren, American Apparel, and The Gap. These examples also include representations of rock bands, among other obscure pop culture references. Licensed t-shirts are also extremely popular. Movie and TV t-shirts have... Uh, can have images of the actors, logos, and funny quotations. That's yeah. from Wikipedia. Uh, from the movie or TV show. Often the most popular t-shirts are those that the character wore themselves, i.e. Bubba Gump from Forrest Gump, or Vote for Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, Do you remember yeah. when everybody in the world had that shirt? I remember that being a thing. God, I was in middle school when that happened. That was... And everybody had a Vote for Pedro shirt. I that... had them. I, I never had one. Mm. I I have seen you them. You were cool. Well, no. I just didn't care about Napoleon Dynamite at all. Great movie. I wouldn't, do you remember when it came out? 2006, I want to guess. You can look it up. I think it's 2006. I would have been out of high school and moving on <laughs> at that point. Yeah. That so so it, at that 2004. Okay. 2004, really? Yeah. So I, yeah. Wow. I thought I, it was later. I would not quite be gone hmm. just yet. I would be very, very close. It must have... It must have gotten popular later. I feel like I feel like it came out, and then when the DVD came out, right, it, it saw was a, a low resurgence. Budget thing. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. I feel like because I don't remember it being in theaters, and if it no. was, I I feel like it. I was, remember it being a thing you rented. Yeah, I remember it being like a cult. Like we watched it in school. Mm. Like people would bring it in, and during our like free period or whatever, like field days and stuff, they yeah. would put it on, and I was like, "This is so stupid. Who is watching this movie?" And see, as a sixth grader, I thought it was great. We'll see. That totally makes sense, though. Yeah. Because your sense of humor has not gotten any better. Am I right, guys? <laughs> That's uh, a high five. Until next time. Be careful where you click. <laughs> but you had one of the shirts. You had one of the Vote for Patreon Yeah, I, and I remember. This is weird. Do you remember when t-shirts used to be like... It seems like t-shirts have gotten better about how they're made. And I remember this t-shirt was like... It was like the ringer t-shirt, right? With yeah. like the different colored collar and sleeves. Yeah. Um, And... Uh, or cuffs, not sleeves. But... I remember that, I don't know if bleach got on it or if the detergent messed with it or what, but the black collar on my Vote for Pedro shirt had like got turned that like when bleach hits a black thing and it's like oh, that weird yeah. like creamy orange color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like the, the, the collar of it was all messed up, oh, so I eventually no. got rid of it. Oh. I would have outgrown it anyway, but. Yeah, fair. Anyway. Uh, designer Catherine Hamnett in the early 1980s pioneered outsized t-shirts with large print slogans. The early first decade of the 21st century saw the renewed popularity of t-shirts with slogans and designs with a strong inclination to the humorous and or ironic. I feel like we've hit um, a second phase in t-shirts finally. I remember like as a kid and then even growing up in like early high school or late high school, early college. It was all about like having a shirt that was funny. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, uh, like the fun guy shirt. Yeah. It was like, I'm like, I had a, I had a shirt that I said that like you would know it, but I think it was really (laughs) common. It was just like a mushroom and it was like. I'm such a fun guy. Or, like, shirts like that, right? Yeah. Like, just or stupid puns. The, the ones that... Okay, so, like, at the risk of sounding like a jerk, you could pick up the majority of these shirts kind of, like, Walmart-based. Yeah. Like, yeah. Target, Walmart kind yeah, of stores. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, they, and even, like, Walmart still has some. Like, yes. well, like I was just over there. I was picking up hair dye, actually. And... Uh, Shout out to episode... A, nobody knows. 30. 30? <laughs> but there, there's one guess, that says, know. like... Y'all need. Or it would have been odd. Thirty-one. Y'all need Jesus, and then there was another one that had a cat in a do rag pouring out milk, and underneath it said like pouring one out for my homies. And I was like, this is like Yikes. something I would see, right? Like this is something that I would have seen when I was in like middle school or high yeah. school, and thought, right. oh, that's kind of funny because mm-hmm. I was in middle school or high school. But these are for like grown adults, yeah. and no. N- or, or, now it seems more like you either wear brand shirts. Mm. Or, like, shirts that are... We're, we're, as a culture, really, and this is just a broader design thing, we're sort of moving back to, like, wanting uh, authenticity and everything. So a lot of shirts now are screen printed again, Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into that later. But, like, it seems like we're really wanting shirts that look like they've been made as opposed to just, like, funny shirts or whatever. Like, we want fashionable t-shirts and we want sort of authentic quote unquote. And we want them shirts. to last too. Yeah, like the print sure. quality needs to be better. Like yeah. there there's I have shirts that I mean my whole my whole thing is that I buy a ton of nerd shirts and I have shirts that are printed in such a way that the ink doesn't settle and so mm. it sits on top and it feels like a sticker or it feels like rubber yeah. on top and then you can't really you have to be super careful washing those cuz they'll like start cracking apart. Um but like 
there's been so many different variations of shirts and like you said they're kind of growing from just funny like this is your girlfriend's shirt and it's like pink and it says i I stole your girlfriend or i'm with stupid or whatever you know like those things seem to be kind of dying out for something a little more genuine um i on the wikipedia because a lot of this is is from wikipedia at least the, the beats of it um they have a specific thing in this in this section that was like um what did it say? It was like a common type of T-shirt is I went to a blank event and only got this lousy shirt. Yeah, and I was like, that's weird to see it so clinically said. But yeah, you see those kinds of shirts everywhere. Yeah. Um. Or now go we're gonna get. Oh, sorry. Myrtle, uh, no, sorry. I was gonna say we're going to Myrtle Beach. Yes. And you've got like the like two t like four T-shirts for fourteen dollars or right. whatever, and they're yeah. all such crappy quality. But you got to get one for everybody back home because they're expecting yep. a shirt. Uh, now we're going to get into the more interesting part of t-shirts, the way you can print on them, the types of printing. Yay! Um, and, again, this is pulled mostly from Wikipedia, but I'll add what I know as well. Um, screen printing yeah! is still the most common form of commercial t-shirt decoration. Uh, and screen printing and design is separated into individual colors. Plastisol or water-based inks are applied to the shirt through mesh screens, which limit the areas where ink is deposited. So if you've ever masked anything, um, if you've ever put down a stencil in anything, think of it like that. Uh, just a more complicated version, basically. In most commercial t-shirt printing, the specific colors and design are used. Uh, I don't know what that sentence means. I'm sorry. I must have messed that up. Uh, to achieve a wider color spectrum with a limited number of colors. Oh, I see. Process printing uh, using only CMYK or simulated process using only white, black, red, green, blue, and gold is effective. Uh, process printing is best suited for light colored shirts. Simulated process is best for dark colored shirts. Okay. Um... In 1959, the invention of Plastisol provided an ink more durable and stretchable than water-based ink, allowing much more variety in t-shirt designs. Very few companies continue to use water-based inks in their shirts, although that's actually coming back. Uh, The majority of companies that create shirts prefer Plastisol due to the ability to print on varying colors without the need for color adjustment at the art level. Ah. Um, So it's like if you use Plastisol, you can print it on a black shirt, on a blue shirt, on a white shirt. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be red or whatever. Um, If you use water-based inks, of course, it's like using a watercolor. It's going to bleed into the uh, fabric a little bit. Yeah. Especially inks trend in and out of fashion, including shimmer, puff, discharge, and chino-based inks. Discharge? Yeah, I don't know what that means either. Oh, uh, sounds gross. It does sound gross. Ugh. A metallic foil can be heat-pressed and stamped onto any plastisol ink, which is Ooh. how they do like those foil business cards. Yeah. Um, when combined with shimmer ink, metallics gives a mirror-like effect wherever the previously screened plastisol ink was applied. Specialty inks are most expensive to purchase, as well as screen, and tend to appear in garments and boutiques, of course. Other methods of decoration used on t-shirts include airbrush, applique, uh, embroidery, impressing or embossing, and the ironing on of an either flock lettering, heat transfers, or dye sublimation transfers. We'll get into dye sublimation later. I cannot later. believe I forgot about air, like, airbrush, airbrush t-shirts. shirts. Oh my god. What, you didn't have a shirt with Taz who had a shirt on it that says your name? Oh, but I had a shirt that had Taz with backwards pants on with his arms crossed and a backwards it. hat. You, like and crisscross tweety, Taz? And That's a little, amazing. And a little Tweety Bird. With, like, a baseball jersey on down to... Why was this a thing? We've talked about this on the podcast know. before. This was, like, why in is, the 90s, dude. Yeah, why like, was, like, the specific... It was very specific. I, like, you, I have it in my mind. Like Cartoon I know. characters yeah. being gangsta I have was it, a huge thing. I have it in my mind. I see it, like, Bugs Bunny with his ears down because his hat's on backwards. Mickey and, Mouse with a baseball jersey that's too big. Yeah, like, I don't know. Down to his knees. Like, late 80s, early nine, early to mid 90s. Like, that That was such a that was such a movement for all of us. I yeah. Don't, I don't know. That was buck wild. Um, another type of printing or another type of application of color is tie-dye. Yeah, hey. So, uh, tie-dye, I remember when tie-dye was huge. It doesn't seem Mm -hmm. like you see many tie-dye shirts anymore. Um, Tie-dye originated in India, Japan, Jamaica, and Africa as early as the 6th century. Wow. Uh, Some forms of tie-dye are bandhani, the oldest known technique used in Indian cultures, and shibori primarily used in uh, Japanese cultures. It was not until the 1960s that tie-dye was introduced to America during the hippie movement. So, I actually didn't know this was introduced to America. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, Heat transfer vinyl. Another form of t-shirt decoration decoration? <laughs> decoration is heat transfer vinyls. These allow people to make short runs of printed shirts using plotter cut vinyl that they can heat press onto garment. Uh, they're made in multitude of colors, patterns, styles. So I actually did this once in uh, printmaking okay. in college. Uh, so it's instead of, so think of it almost like a sticker. Yeah. Um, that's actually how I made the shirts for my eventual like uh, senior grad thesis mm. show. Um, and so it lets you do shorter runs so you don't have to like expose a screen and mm. do all, go all the work that goes in screen printing because screen printing is awesome but it takes a lot of time 
Um, so when you need something quick, you can do this. And you basically just let, if you have like a um, like a laser cutter kind of machine, you just put what is basically just a giant white sticker okay. um, in there. It laser cuts out the thing. You pull all the stuff off, and then you heat transfer it with like a t-shirt version of a panini press. Okay. Um, you just press it down onto the shirt with something blocking the thing so it doesn't burn, um, blocking the vinyl. And once it's heat pressed in, it's pressed in, and it, you can wash it, and you can do whatever with it. And it won't crack or no. anything like that? No. Um, oh. It's really interesting, but it's not really recommended for, like, large graphics. Mm-hmm. So all we did was, like, a logo, like a typeset logo on the chest that was really small. And it always has to be white, or does it depend no, on the No, sorry. Vinyl? That's just the color we used. Oh, okay. Um, it can be any color vinyl, but it's only, you know, it's not very friendly for, like, gradients or anything like yeah. that it's usually one color so the vinyl itself has to have a color in it right you yeah can't so you add... just cut it out of colored vinyl. okay gotcha um, you can't add it after right it's like okay. t-shirt construction paper i guess yeah um in a way but it was cool it's, it's interesting it's cool for like doing short runs yeah last one cool. we're going to talk about is uh dye sublimation printing oh hey okay so dye sublimation is what i would call dtg direct to garment digital printing um, it uses full color artwork to transfer images to polyester and polymer coated substrate based t-shirts. Dye sublimation, also commonly referred to as all over printing, uh, came into widespread use in the 21st century, enabling some designs previously impossible. Printing with unlimited colors using large CMYK printers with special paper and ink is possible, unlike screen printing, which requires screens for each color in the design. So mm-hmm. imagine if you're laying down a stencil or if you're, yeah, if you're laying down a stencil for a t-shirt, you would need a stencil for your white, your red, your green, your black, whatever. With this, it is basically the equivalent of putting a t-shirt in the printer. Okay. Like that's that's how all of our uh, merch is printed. Yeah, um, it's all DTG because it's just the quickest way to do it, and that's what it allows companies to be able to afford to do that service for and like streamers or something. So these are normally larger runs worth of stuff, and or is it like it's quicker? It's quicker and it's less resource heavy. Okay. So it's basically the same thing of like a print shop having being able to run your poster. Gotcha. Right. If you pay them five bucks, they can run your poster because it's just putting a file in. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Okay. So instead of having uh, having to expose the screen, mm-hmm. wash out the screen, reuse the screen, all that kind of stuff, if they were to screen print our shirts, they can just literally put it in the printer and it'll print the thing. Gotcha. Um, and that's what allows like places like Design by Humans to work. Like I don't think there would be a lot of money in doing a design by humans a red bubble one of those kinds of sites in screen printing yeah. i think that would be really um well your files would have to have a lot more press work and it would just be it would just be a lot more man heavy yeah at that point there probably wouldn't be a profit um die sublimation is economically viable for small quality printing the uh, unit cost is similar to f- for short or long production runs screen printing has higher setup costs required larger numbers to be produced and cost effective and the unit cost is higher Solid ink is changed into a gas without passing through a liquid phase using heat and pressure. The design is first produced in a computer image file format, such as JPEG, GIF, PNG, any other. Uh, it is printed onto purpose-made computer paper or computer printer uh, using large heat presses and vaporizes the ink directly into fabric. I didn't know it turned into a vapor. Vaporized it, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy to think that it just skips over a liquid phase. like straight. <laughs> it heats it so quickly yeah, that it doesn't go into liquid. wild. Uh, by mid-2012, this method has become widely used for t-shirts. Now we're going to get on to some interesting facts about Ooh, t-shirts. Okay. Uh, and most of these are from uh, a few different surveys. Surveys. One was commissioned by Custom Inc., okay. which is a t-shirt printer. Uh, nine in every ten Americans own at least one shirt that they refuse to throw away because of sentimental attachment. Oh, I like that, though. Is there one you can think of? One that I would never throw away? Yeah. I don't know if there's any that I would never throw away. I mean, there are a lot that I see. I'm like, oh, I can't throw that away. Yeah. So I guess in that regard, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I have one t-shirt that I'm like, I, like, I, I'm trying to think of like, you know, in case of a fire and I had to grab one right. shirt out of my closet. I don't know if there's one shirt I would grab. Really? Um, do you have one? I don't know because like, I feel like every new shirt I buy becomes my favorite shirt for mm. a little bit, you know, like yep. every, every new one I get. And then, but I always go back and I'm always like, oh, but this one, I forgot about this one and I love this one, which I'm buying shirts at, you know, like a ridiculous rate that no <laughs> other human should be buying shirts. Yeah. So. You're always on that t-shirt grind. Yeah. I, I literally like after midnight goes up like pretty much every night i'm like refreshing the like the the things that reset at midnight to see what the the new shirt shirt, yeah see what the new shirts are i pretty much always do that i sent a link to you and brie today of a shirt that i saw you were always like i used to i used to check them before 
And now I'm just like, if there's anything I like, Liddy's going to send it yeah, to me anyway. So. Yeah, because I, I sent you one uh, recently about like Red Dead Redemption, and then I sent yeah. Brie one about Kirby today. Because I'm just like, when I see them, I'm just like, I want other people to enjoy these these things <laughs> yeah. too. And also, it makes me it makes it feel normalized that other people are buying shirts, and it's not just sure. me buying five and six shirts at a yeah. time. <laughs> oh. What percentage of Americans do you think wears t-shirts? Percentage of Americans? Yes. Oh. Most of these surveys are Americans. <laughs> 90%? 95. 95, yeah. I was going to say, it's got to be up it's there. It's hard to imagine someone not wearing a t-shirt at some point. Yeah. Like, at least, like, underneath your shirt. Right. Like, even if you are just a dressy boy that just wears dressy shirts all the time, you got to yeah. wear something. Or just, like, there. around the house. You, you don't wear yeah. buttoned-up shirts and yeah, you slacks got, like, you got as soon as you get out of bed. you got a button-up silk pajama set you change into <laughs> right. when you come home, you know? Like, you can't just put a t-shirt on you well, too way good. to put Mary on blast. <laughs> No, he, no, he just changes into his dressing gown. Oh, sure, yeah, It's got sorry. ostrich feathers all over it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's different. Uh, at least once a week, 89% of t-shirt wearing Americans put on a t-shirt. Well, look, yeah. That does make sense. That makes sense, yeah. It's a weird stat, that, that actually. Check, that checks out. Uh, 91% of Americans claim to own a favorite shirt, as we were mentioning yeah. earlier. Yeah, okay. What number, or 34% of Americans say, what color is their favorite color of t-shirt? Ooh, favorite color of t-shirt. Um, part of me wants to say white, like a white t-shirt. Uh, I'm going to say blue because that's my favorite. You were right the first time. White? It was white, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I would have said black. It feels like oh. everybody owns black shirts. I guess I'm thinking, because, okay, so my mind immediately goes to the fact that when they sell t-shirts, if they sell them, like, in a pack, it's almost always like six packs of or like, oh, sure, like six the Hanes white. Or fruit, fruit yeah, shirts, yeah. And, because I I went and bought um some of those like Hanes ones, the tagless ones, just to sleep in because mm. I wanted like big baggy shirts to sleep in. Yeah, and uh, so I bought some of those, and I was just like, they're all like I wanted colored ones. I didn't mm. want like just a bag of white ones. So I was like, okay, I want I want gray ones, and they were like, well, if you want gray, you're also getting navy and, yeah, and yeah. orange and camo, like <laughs> you <laughs> sure, know yeah. the stupid colors that I don't care about. Uh, what percentage of Americans do you think claim to own more than 10 t-shirts? More than 10? Yes. Uh, 80%. 62%. What? That low? That's, well, think about this, though. Also, I'm kind of, like, above and beyond what the normal yeah, amount of... Yeah, me too. I probably have human. at least 10 just shirts that are made by homage. Yeah. Like, I, I buy their shirts all the time. I literally, so with a gun to my head, would not be able to tell you how many t-shirts I own. Oh, no, me neither. I would not be able to tell... I, I have to be north of 30. I, dude, yeah, like I will. <laughs> like no joke, I'm probably around thirty. I find shirts still like in my drawers and stuff, like buried under everything else. That I'm like, oh my god, I bought this in like 2007. Oh yeah, I'm not even counting the and, shirts that are back home. Home. Yeah, and I'm like, and I've. I didn't even think of that. And I can't. I've not worn it since you know whatever right. when I started college, and I'm just kind of like, uh. Oh yeah, this thing existed, and I still like it. So I'm gonna go ahead. And <laughs> yeah, take it. even if it's back home in my closet, I'm like, I might wear that someday. Yeah, I might. Yeah, I, I, might, I might wear God, it. I'm terrible with that with I've wrestling shirts. Easily especially. got a hundred, over a hundred t-shirts. Really? Have to. Wow. Have to. People collect shoes. I have a ridiculous amount of no. That makes sense. Video game and superhero t-shirts. <laughs> uh, five hundred million t-shirts were sold in 1985. Wow. How many think were sold in 2005? How many was it in 1985? 500 million. 500 million? Yes. A billion. It was a billion t-shirts yes. in 2005. Yes, I figured it might have doubled. Also, uh, the 62% of Americans claiming to own more than 10 shirts. That's mm-hmm. 1.5 billion shirts, roughly. Jeez. Enough to stretch around the world 34 times. Wow. Uh, okay, so a billion shirts were sold in 2005. How many do you think were sold in 2010, which was the last time that this was Okay, so, so five years later. Yes. Not a trillion. Well, not no, not a trillion. <laughs> a trillion? <laughs> I don't know. That would <laughs> five billion. <laughs> it's two billion. Ah, it doubled again. I well, now I wanted a trillion. I wanted it to be a huge leap. That would have been great for the story. <laughs> a trillion. That would have been great Hold for on. the story. How do numbers work? No one knows. That would be. Nobody knows how numbers work. <laughs> <laughs> that would mean every person in the world Can would Can I just own tell you, like... I forgot you could have multiple billions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, once you hit a billion, <laughs> the only way up is to go to trillion. <laughs> but you made it from 500 million to a billion just fine. I don't know. <laughs> I know there's multiple millions. 
Oh, that was funny. <laughs> once we get to once we get to billion, the lines get blurry. <laughs> There's nowhere to go but up. <laughs> oh god, that was so funny. That would mean like each person would have had to have had like what 150 shirts a person or something know. in the world. I don't know. My math's wrong there, but I don't know what it is. Your math's wrong. I went from a billion to a trillion. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that was funny. Oh, I'm so happy this podcast exists so my stupidity can be on display <laughs> forever. <laughs> I don't know how numbers work, y'all. I don't know how long we've gone, but that's it. Oh. That's all I got. <laughs> Great. What an ending moment. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ridiculous. As a person who has designed shirts, uh-huh. do you have a favorite shirt you've designed? Either, like, just in general or for podcast-related activities? Favorite shirt I've designed. Hold on, let me pull up the store. <laughs> you gotta check it yeah, out. Yeah, because I gotta look. Because um, I can't think of a favorite sh- Like, I have tons of shirts that I really like. But I I almost, I almost always like shirts other people buy me more than I like the mm. ones I buy for myself. So, like, Mary got me the one that says Easy Bake Coven. Yeah. And it's all the little girls standing around and they're, like, witches. And then you got me the Munch Squad shirt. Yeah. And so, like... I I have those are different like those are in a in a like a special place a because, of their own yeah kind of right because like I'm not buying them for myself someone mm. someone has paid attention to the things that I like or the clothes that I wear and was like I'm gonna get you this thing because I know you like this thing yeah like that is more important to me than me going well I'm, well here's another Deadpool shirt you know like because right. it's it's just it's more of the same yeah but. It's a little bit different because because Mary also got me a Deadpool shirt, but I think that I have a couple favorites that I've okay. designed for us. Okay. Um, my I, li- I really like the Be Careful Where You Click shirt. Yeah. I think that looks very like. Yeah. Um, I like the I like the Click to Learn More. Just the logo shirt. Yeah, I like I like that one because like when you first showed me the logo that you made for the show, it was it took me back to like the eighties like mm. learning. Like reading Rainbow. Yeah, we talked about of, like old textbooks yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and the old textbooks and and things like that. And it it really took me back to that. And I I really I liked the look of it a lot. I could see it on a shirt already, mm. which I liked. The yeah, the be careful where you click shirt is really cool. Um, it reminds me of just like classic like Vignelli style typography. Mm. Um, I really love the shirts, both of them more so yours, I guess, because it's not mine. Um, the Team Lady, I love murder shirt. Uh, oh, yeah. With a skull on it. Yeah. I really like that That's shirt. That's so freaking weird you say uh, that because I picked that one up this morning and I almost <laughs> wore it. I almost wore that shirt. I wear that one probably the most of any of the shirts we've made. I wear, uh, I wear of the ones that I bought from the Click to Learn More store, I bought the one that's got, the, the red one that's got your, the D on it. Just mm, the, the, yeah, yeah. the logo the D, D. The, the Dorm Streams D. And that, like, the Heather shirts, like I've said millions of times, mm. are my favorites. So I, I got all Heather shirts. Um, and then my the one that you made that's like the badge style team Liddy. Oh yeah, yeah. I really like that one because mm. I got that one in a really pretty heathered blue, and it looks like my blue. And so like that's one of my favorite ones too. Mm. I really like that one a lot. But I can't think like I have tons of shirts in different like print qualities. Like some that are great, some that I got from like that six dollar shirt yeah. website. That's like I have one that's like poor print quality, but it was six bucks, so I didn't sure. expect it. But it says. Um, it's not drinking alone if your cat's with you. Nice. It was just like one of my favorite, one of my yeah. favorite ones. But I mean, I have, I have, easily have to have a hundred or more shirts. That's insane. Like, I don't. You don't want to see what my closet. I don't have space <laughs> in my closet. They're literally just there. They're mm, in existence yeah. in my room. I have a problem of like not limiting myself in buying mm. t-shirts where i'm just like oh that's a really like homage just dropped a really cool t-shirt i yeah. gotta pick it up or every time i make a shirt for us i'm i have to pick it up yeah even though it's you yeah. know it's just adding to the supply of dorm streams and liddy shirts i already have my, my shopping experience with t-shirts online specifically falls into the realm of everything i do when i shop online which is mm. add way more than yep. i'm ever gonna make buy a huge cart delete yeah it. and then go through and start deleting it feel guilty about it walk away from it get the email it's like leave something in your Cart, here's and then 15% I, here's off. Here's 15 percent off, yeah. and then I go back and I'm like, well, it is 15 percent off. I guess I gotta do it now. Yeah, I do that all the time too. And then you know you go 
go back and you I whittle do it, it down. Much all the time. Which, like, I, I try to put a limit on myself, and I go, okay, I'm not going to spend more than thirty dollars sure, on shirts. Yeah. Like, I have to put that. Like, I have to put my foot down. Because when I ordered the, um, I got the Funhouse shirt and the Sugar Pine Seven shirt, and I think it ended up being like thirty bucks for two shirts, and I was like, this is uncalled for for me. Like, because normally, because oh, yeah. I'll get like five shirts for thirty bucks, or right. you know, or whatever, yeah, yeah. like uh, on good deals like that. So, because I'm also cheap <laughs> <laughs> i have no taste i can't do math and i'm cheap hit me up fellas <laughs> jesus that was aggressive <laughs> anyways that was good though i, I learned a lot Thanks. about t-shirts i i didn't know that they started as something that would be considered um kind of risque yeah that That's- surprised me too that's kind of wild because now we have what t-shirt contests which That's are true. certainly risque do we not is that still a thing i don't know people do still gr- do that do girls still go wild i don't know if that's still <laughs> are a girls thing. out there going yeah, wild yeah they still just going wild i don't know if that's still a thing or not yeah but me neither i'm not sure well <laughs> Woody, where <laughs> thank, can people find thank you thank you for the episode Dorm. that was yeah, good thanks is this am i supposed to do it or are you supposed to do I it i don't know i don't know anymore twitch.tv slash team lenny where can people find you twitch.tv slash storm streams we also have a store speaking of shirts we yeah. do have a, we do have a store where you can buy some really cool shirts and that's gonna have some some new cool stuff coming down the line soon so yeah keep your eyes out maybe something different we'll but... see what uh, could we be talking about? I don't know. I think people have probably figured it out already. But. Nah, 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 nah. We've, we've got the tightest lips in the business. Loose lips sink ships. That's why we're not sinking them. Have you heard that? Yeah. I love that phrase. Yeah. Loose lips sink ships. Yeah. We also have Twitter. <laughs> Dorm as a YouTube and a patron. Uh-huh. And I say patron. I always say it like that. I always say patron because I think it's funny. It's patronizing. Oh, Patreon. I took the joy out of it. Good. Uh, we, no. both have, we both have Instagrams. Yeah, Instagram, Twitter. Discord. Pretty much anywhere that you type our names in, you can find us. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah. Not dorm. TikTok. I, no, you probably have one. I do have but TikTok. I do, but I don't have one. I don't have anything on there, though. I just can't bring myself to it. It's I not did. good. <laughs> it's not a good app. I have... I, I don't... Like it's not how, a good app. I like how you said that. You're just like, I don't have any reason for it. No, like, it's not good. It's pure curiosity. I just want it to be the next Vine. It's not the next Vine. But when the next Vine comes out, supposedly yeah, this month. To be, right, okay. There's supposed uh, to be another one. I will vine. be all over that shit. Just Ooh, so you know. Oh, my God. Am I going to end up in a Vine? Yeah, probably. Oh, we're going to have to script some Vines. That's fine. See so when you can go Vine famous. Fine famous? I Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a trillion came after a billion. That's true, you did. Okay. We don't need to talk about this right now. Uh, I think that's it. <laughs> is that all you got? I think it's all I got. Our brains is broken. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Until next time. Be careful where you click. <laughs>